Good morning. Um, another one of those fill-in days. It's Mosiah chapter 24. And in this chapter, um, the people of Alma are being persecuted by the Lamanites. And um, Amulon, a former priest serving with, I'm sorry, <coughs> a serving with um, Alma, in King Noah's court, is taking out some bitterness on Alma and his people. and But the Lord is blessing them so that they cannot feel the burdens that are placed upon their backs. And then, um, of course, they are delivered from bondage and they go to Zarahemla. So that's what's happening in this chapter. Um, there are some things I, I want to... I want to talk about and um, and the first one is um, the burdens not feeling the burdens placed upon their backs um, it says that um, sorry it says that um, you know why were they put into bondage they were humble. They had been baptized. They had made covenants with the Lord. They were being faithful. And um, it just makes a note that says that when Abinadi first came, he said, if they don't repent, they will be put into bondage. And then two years later, he came, and his warning was then proclaimed that they would be brought into bondage. And if they still refuse to repent, they will be destroyed. It was at this time that Alma was converted and began to teach the words of Abinadi secretly to those Nephites who would listen. Thus, even though Alma and his people had repented, it was still necessary that Abinadi's first prophecy be fulfilled. Uh, the, a great principle we can learn from this portion of the book of Mosiah is that the longer we wait to repent and forsake our sins, the more serious the consequences will be. So even though they did repent... They still had to pay the consequences for their previous hard-heartedness. Um, and then it gives a quote by Melvin J. Ballard, which I really liked. And it says, Every man and woman who is putting off until the next life the task of correcting and overcoming the weaknesses of the flesh are sentencing themselves to years of bondage, for no man or woman will come forth in the resurrection until he has completed his work until he has overcome, until he has done as much as he can do. I loved that so much because, um, you know, we're all kind of, we're waiting for the resurrection and we're waiting for that judgment day. But it says, no man or woman will come forth until he has completed his work, until he has overcome, until he has done as much as he can do. And it's like work, 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 you know, it's like this gospel is not for the lazy or for the faint of heart. You have got to work every day, every minute of every hour of every day. You have to work. You have to constantly be growing and repenting. And it's just, just a little reminder to me that you can't even slip. Not for one second you can't slip, you know. And it goes, um, Sadly, for many this bondage has already begun in this life. As with Limpi and his people, if we, are slowly to, if we are slow to hearken to the counsel of the Lord, we only make our transformation to freedom more difficult and increase the degree of our bondage. <clears throat> I don't know. It just gives you so much to think about, you know. Um, and then, and then it gives uh, some counsel from the prophet Joseph Smith, and it's taken from lectures on faith, and I loved this part. In the Sunday school lesson I taught on this, we had a great discussion about this particular quote, and I loved it so much, because, anyways, I'm going to read it. Okay, so... It is also of equal importance that men should have the idea of the existence of the attribute judgment in God. 
in order that they may exercise faith in him for life and salvation. For without the idea of the existence of this attribute in the deity, it would be impossible for men to exercise faith in him for life and salvation, seeing that it is through the exercise of this attribute that the faithful in Jesus Christ are delivered out of the hands of those who seek their destruction. For if God were not to come out in swift judgment against the workers of iniquity and the powers of darkness, his saints would not be saved. For it is by judgment that the Lord delivers his saints out of the hands of all their enemies, and those who reject the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But no sooner is the idea of the existence of this attribute planted in the minds of men that it gives power to the mind for the existence of faith and confidence in God. And they are enabled by faith to lay hold on the promises which are set before them and wade through all the tribulations and afflictions to which they are subjected by reason of the persecution from those who know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, believing that in due time the Lord will come out in swift judgments, judgment against their enemies and they shall be cut off from before him and that in his own due time he will bear them off conquerors and more than conquerors in all things. And that just, I don't know how to put into words like what that means in my mind. You know, it's if you don't believe that the guiding principle of the Father's plan is judgment, if you don't believe that God has this attribute of justice in him, then how do you exercise faith in him? If you don't believe that there is justice in his dealings, then why have faith? You know, uh, if you don't believe that he will judge those who are persecuting you, then how can you have faith that I, it's, it's, very, it was very thought provoking for me. Very, um, and uh, I just, I loved that so much. I wish I could remember some of the comments that we had from Sunday school about this particular quote, but I love it. I loved it so much. Just the thought that faith and, and judgment go hand in hand. I had never thought of it that way before. And, but that is one of the ruling principles of my faith is that you know, people are like, oh my goodness, how can he get away with that? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, he'll be judged for it. He's not going to get away with it. You know, whenever somebody hurts one of my loved ones, I'm like, he's going to get his. You know, not that I want him to get his, but it, it's a comforting thought that there is justice in my Heavenly Father and that he will judge those who hurt my loved ones appropriately for their crimes. Anyways, I loved it. And then, um, in just a few chapters, we discover a tre treasure of spiritual wisdom, the sacred baptismal covenant, the exorable, inexorable justice of God, the means whereby the chastened can look forward to deliverance, and the compassion of the Lord in gathering the faith out of bond faithful out of bondage. There are many great lessons that can be learned from these passages and just as many questions of conscience we might ask ourselves and I guess I'll just some of these questions because I love questions of conscience so do we remember our baptismal covenants and the obligation of renewing them weekly um, and then it gives all the chapters in which they're found what does it mean to stand as a witness how do we put ourselves in bondage as, as leaders, are we worthy of people's trust? And that's one I really enjoyed because it's like, am I worthy of the trust? Am I worthy of the trust of um, my family watching these? Am I worthy of the trust of Malia's little boys? Am I worthy of their trust? And so those are just some things I wanted to share about Mosiah chapter 24. All right. Love you all.